Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God. Uh, it's been a good day. Uh, one, one more round of applause, knowing, and I just, especially to the musicians and to our amazing Jordan. <laughs> Conducted the whole thing. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to actually let, there's a couple notes and then we're going to keep moving. One, I've trapped you in this room for a long time. So if folks need the bathroom or if you need to go, feel free. What we have next is about 15 minutes of just talk back so you can just meet the incredible human beings that are sitting in front of you right now. So do feel free to check out the bathroom or whatever you need. Um, also, we've applauded plenty. I'm going to ask for the audience to hold applaud until the end of the talk back. Otherwise, I'll never get you home. Because I know every time you want to uproariously clap. And you can always adopt the GSA's finger snaps to show support or that you agree. Okay? That's always it. That'll help us keep going. Um, before we get carried away, I just need to thank so many people. And there are so many people that make this possible. And I'm going to lose all of them if I don't say this. Okay. Uh, one, all of you. Thank you for being such a kind, generous, thoughtful, exciting audience. It was really awesome to be with you tonight. Thank you to the Kelly Strayhorn and the Alloy and Lauren and Melanie and Colleen and Pixie. The people here make this home. And it's a big deal for the 25 of us to get to have a home here. So thank you to all of you for making this possible. The teaching artist team is incredible. There's Dustin, our assistant director right there. Paul Cruz is behind the camera. Judith is with us. Marie Romagno is with us. I mean, there's this incredible team of folks that made this art possible with the team that we have in front of you. Um, oh my god. Parents and guardians and loved ones and supporters that make this possible. Without your ride, without your time, without your love, without your care, this would not work. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to all of you. All of you. Uh, and my loved ones and my people back there, thank you. You deal with a lot. Uh, the Dreams of Hope staff, we have an incredible team of folks. Kavanaugh is somewhere in the building who makes a lot of these things happen. Susan Hall couldn't be with us tonight, but she founded this thing as the reason I have a job. Oh my god. And then Seth Rosenberg was right there. He's our executive director. And I get to introduce him for a second. He also has a couple of things he wanted to share before we get too far. So I'll use that. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Uh, I, uh -oh. Suddenly I have the wrong app <laughs> uh, I just have a few other thank yous. Um, there's a lot of. Uh, Besides all of you, there's a lot of organizations that support us. Uh, this, none of this would be possible without them. And I just wanted to thank them very quickly. The Allegheny Regional Asset District, the Andy Warhol Museum, the Fine Foundation, the Fisher Fund, Bliss in Pittsburgh, who paid for everybody uh, 1900 to be at all of our shows this weekend. Thank you, Bliss in. Uh, the Hines Endowments, the McDonald O'Brien Foundation, Kelly Strayhorn Theater, obviously, Mookie Fund, the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts, and the Pittsburgh Center for Creative Reads. Um, and now I need your support. Not money. Well, we'll take the money. That's the <laughs> um, In your programs, there is questioning. And before you leave tonight, it would really, really, really help us if you would fill out as much of it as you can. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because if we're going to ask you to do that, you have a right to know why. So we're going to ask you basically if you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about what you put in the show. And the reason for that is we want to know who we're reaching. And so then we'll also know who we're not reaching. That helps with our outreach. Uh, we want to know what you think of the show because that helps us with our programming and also frankly all those organizations I just listed. They also want to know the answer to these things. And so it would really be great. I promise you we will treat your information as unconfidential. 
Uh, it will only be used, you know, it's all carried up, not your individual uh, information. We will not share your email address or anything else with anyone so that you be identified. If you give us your, your uh, we're only asking for a name to know what go, who goes with the email address. If you give us your email address, you do two things. We will send you the results of this survey, in case you're interested. And we'll put you on our mailing list and we'll send you our e-newsletters. And you'll hear from us 10, 14 times a year. You probably get a lot worse junk mail than that. And if you don't like the newsletter, you can just go and subscribe. But it would really, really help us a lot if you fill out the question. Thanks again for being here. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> there, folks are um, and the programs you just pulled out, just so you know, they half service programs and half are an educational resource. So there's a ton of information on here. People might have started to catch on in the audience. Every teacher name that was mentioned, almost every, was a reference to um, LGBT history. So there's a lot of, all those last names are referencing different folks or different moments, different things. So you can check out more information about them. There's also information about the Lavender Scare, about witch trials, about contemporary Wicca practice. So all of that's kind of in here. And then also the last page, a couple of incredible uh, members of the group made some art for you. So there's a letter from one to two after the play. Keep your fan fiction love alive. And then we have a drawing also created by the letters by Corey. There you are, and share your individual artwork. Uh, so that's there for you. And one of the main reasons that was assembled, we had a landmark moment yesterday. That was yesterday. Uh, woo! Yesterday morning at 10 o'clock, we had over 50 Gay Straight Alliance high school members from across Pittsburgh and West Virginia or West Pennsylvania. That's where we live. Uh, <laughs> join us for a matinee performance uh, and a three-hour event and we got to have a great conversation talking about where this resonated with them, in what ways this GSA is similar to theirs, in what ways it might be very different with the witches and etc. Um, so there was that kind of moment and that's why this was built and it just it was incredible to have that many young people in a room talking about these things. I need to stop talking and what I would love to hear is if we feel Ah, I would forget that. <laughs> so, and we'll learn more and more about um, how the process was built, but everything was built in collective, except the one song that you heard during the homecoming dance, and that does deserve a shout out. Our lovely Antoinette wrote that song. Yeah. And, then, and there's a bunch of new in your name. Everyone's doing incredible work, but Matt Mushik and Crystal did a lot of the costuming you're seeing, and then TG was a lead part in the writing process. So just so you know that there, like, there was a lot of that kind of work happening as well. And what I would love to do now is start from the side, go all the way across, and then the second row. So all the seats up top, and then the second row. Uh, name, age, what keeps you busy outside of Dreams of Hope, and the role you played in the play. Uh, my name is Alexi. I'm 17 years old. I played two. I uh, go to Quaker Valley High School. Um, my name's Natalie. Uh, I'm 16. Just forgot my age. Uh, I go to Kappa. I'm a vocal major, and I was I played Joe. It's just like two. Not two. <laughs> I'm Travis. I'm 21, and I read and write fan fiction. I'm Kira. I go to Kappa for visual arts, and uh, I play the part of the play. Uh, I'm 16. Um, I'm Matt, I'm 14 years old, I go to High Kappa Middle School for Kids Viola, and I was one of four who played the entity of the judge. I'm Jordan, <laughs> I'm 16 years old, I go to Our Lady of the Secret High School, um, I played Parker in the play, and I love to bowl, and I love theater production. So I'm Avery, so I'm black. <laughs> I play Avery, I'm Kwan. Um, I go to Kappa for musical theater, you know, senior status. Um, and I work at Abercrombie and Fitch besides this. I'm Lauren, I'm 18 and I'm a senior at Hampton High School. I play Morgan in Staying True to Character. I have lots and lots of work with college applications. <laughs>
17 J, I'm 17, almost 18. I go to Odres. I play rugby. I'm Crystal. I'm 20 years old, and I play one of the four parts of the entity of the judge. And outside of this, I am the human resources supervisor at AMC Water Park 22. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm 82 years old. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I played one of the one of the many four people that are the entity of the judge, <laughs> and I do freelance sewing and alteration design stuff like that. I'm seven more minutes of your time and I want to first just ask the crew I'll ask a question about what the process was like to get to where we were today does anyone want to try to answer Matt? Cool. Um, well our process many eons ago and <laughs> many eons every months we had this idea to do a thing and we did a thing <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> very very informative I tell you. <laughs> well, uh, in the summer like a couple who have been in for a couple of years, came together and wrote a couple things to like get it started and plant the seed, haha, Joe pun. And uh, then we had everyone come and we started writing together. And this is going to be hard to believe, so hold on to your seats. Are you holding? Yeah. yeah. This play is fiction. <laughs> it's really hard. It took me a while, but it's fiction. <laughs> Um, so the writing process was actually pretty simple. We all wrote the play. Like it was like we all like had prompts together. We did little skits, and we kind of combined together into this weird Frankenstein-ish monster that we had to edit like 20 times. And like we wrote the play before we actually cast it. So yeah, characters not actors, <laughs> except for me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we like served the prompts and stuff like that and we applied our own experiences and the experience we had with our friends and our friends' experience with families to the play. So this is so we can resonate with as many audience members as possible. So the characters actually are people in a way. Just not us. <laughs> 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 
And would someone fill me in a little bit about how the, about how the music was created for the text? I guess I'm doing it. Um, I don't know. We just kind of like looked at like the sections that we needed music for and got some emotions that we had to put in the music and uh, kind of did our own little thing and then came back and like, just put it together. Are there any questions from the audience for our team? I'd love like one or two questions tonight. About the show, about their lives, about anything you're thinking about. Anything, guys. Literally anything. Yeah? Go for it. We've got a question. We've got a question. Okay. How long does the whole process take? Oh, that's great. So what's the timeline, schedule, what goes into it? Does anyone want to try to tackle that question, Quan? Um, we actually had like um, a workshop with a few members, um, most, mostly veterans. Um, a few members of the group, and we we met over the summer, and um, we that's when we started working on our main idea, like working on how we could mold that. And then as we um, started the uh, season, we had um, everyone else's beautiful work, like work, and uh, basically back to what TJ said, it was like all mashed together. So it took like ooh, from summertime. Like, yeah, it was a little wild, yeah. Well, not wild, but like, I mean, it took a decent amount, yeah. <laughs> so, um, there was the general idea over the summer. We pretty much only narrowed it down to witches and powers. And then we met up in the fall, and um, the whole audition process, getting to know everybody took quite some time. So, we really didn't even get into writing until really when we went on a camping trip in what, just the beginning of December? October. October. Oh, October. Okay, in October, um, we did some writing and we had the general outline of the script, but we still needed to do movement and music. And we didn't have, we had pretty much the full play, I'd say. The, what, what would you guys say we had the final draft? We were still making it like yesterday. <laughs> And, and if folks are curious, the logistics of it, there were three workshops in the summer, and then we meet every Sunday for four hours. So we started on Sunday, the first Sunday of September, and have gone straight through. We get one camping trip for two days altogether, glamping, glamorous camping. Um, and then this past week, I've stolen all of their time so that we were together since Sunday until this minute. Like every minute they're not in school, they're here. Thank you. Um, and I even took them out of school on Friday. Um, so that kind of gives you the logistics. Of that. Maybe one more question? Somebody. Yes. Come on. yes. <laughs> so even though it was fiction, how would you say that um, some of the themes like bullying and school and homophobia relate to your actual lives? Sweet. Rowan, I saw your hand go right up. Um, so there's one line that deeply resonates with me in this whole entire play, and that's when Joe asks to, was it a religious school? Um, I also have the moments where I feel like Riley and want to tell everybody at my school to shut up and how incorrect they are. So to me, there's a lot of like things throughout there that oh, I feel a lot of along with the So, so much. We'll do one round of applause for you. Thank you so much. Have a safe trip home. We'll see you next time.